All right, welcome everybody. This is Eric Gebhardt with AltaVest. Thank you for joining me. We're gonna talk about some secret options strategies and methods and approaches that we've developed over the decades of experience in the markets. How to select the best option trades in just minutes a day. We can do high probability options trading using autopilot, a very user-friendly approach to options trading. Uh, we've got clients using this and they love these secret strategies. So with that said, let's talk about speculation. There's Duke and Duke and Valentine talking about speculating in futures and commodities. So we do that, we accept that risk, hoping to profit on price movement. So with that said, take a brief moment and do read that risk disclosure, it is important. All right, very good. The main thing here is that all funds committed should be risk capital and past performance is no guarantee of future results. Here's a quote from Jeremy Grantham. He predicted the 2008 financial crisis. He thinks the stock market in the next 20 years might generate two to 3% real return. So if that's the case, maybe we ought to look at some alternative approaches. So that's what we are talking about today. Here's Ed Sequoia, one of the market wizards. Great book, if you haven't read it. He reminded us, markets are always right. We aren't, and it can be expensive trying to convince the markets that you are correct. <laughs> I think we've all been there. So we wanna to try to take what the market is giving us. That's what we're going to talk about. And we're gonna need a new approach to do that. We don't always need to be 100% correct with what we're doing in terms of the strategy and the, the pricing and timing. So we are going to talk about that and doing it in just minutes a day. So a little bit about us first, three common barriers to trading, uh, looking at indexes versus stocks, probabilities, high probability trading, we have a live demonstration as well as some trade alerts. And they'll have a special offer for the Synergy Trader Group and then some FAQs at the end. So here's a, a picture of us down on the trading floor years back. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit different now, not as busy. And that's partly what we're gonna talk about, how the algorithms uh, are now dominating the marketplace. And in fact, how we can use those algorithms to uh, our advantage. We're a brokerage firm, been doing this for, uh, since 1997, traded millions and millions of futures options contracts over the years. We're of course regulated, we're located in California and Illinois. And with all that experience, we've been a big part of the growth in the E-mini S&P 500 option space. So that's a big part of what we're talking about today, our E-mini options on the S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell, but for the most part, the S&P 500. So along the way, we've learned what works and what doesn't work the hard way sometimes. So like Thomas Edison said, we haven't always failed. We just found maybe 10,000 ways that didn't work. So, and who am I? Who's this guy jabbering in your ear? Well, I'm Eric Gebhardt. I've been doing this about 29 years, licensed since 1991, co-founder of AltaVest, had my BS in business administration from the University of Southern California. I got started way back when, in terms of my interest in futures and options, during an investments course, we had a, a finance class and we were studying futures, options, that's my textbook. Actually, I did drag that out of the closet earlier last year. I found it. So those are my notes. And we were studying crude oil at the time. It had doubled in value. And I uh, thought it was fascinating and compelling how these financial instruments uh, worked. And I began my career in investments in the securities industry with my six and 63 licenses in the mutual fund industry. But I guess you could say futures kept whispering in my ear in the options market. So I was able to attain a job at an options trading firm. So stay with us here during the presentation. We're gonna have a special offer for the Synergy Trading Group, how to get something worth over $18,000, participate even for free. Now there are three common barriers we've determined. This is what we've uh, come up with over the years, some broad strokes. So we need to get past all the contradictions. There's our market analyst, we have him up in the front of our office. He's not very accurate, but um, you get this all the time, every day. Recession watch, Morgan Stanley says, recession watch. And the same day, uh, here's an article, there's no reason to fear buying stocks at record highs. So you get that all the time, how do you process that? And what about just buying the best rated mutual funds, chasing performance? Great article in the Wall Street Journal a while back called Recency Bias. 
looking at actively managed mutual funds with a five-star rating, only 12% did well enough over the next five years to earn a top rating, and then 10% got a rock bottom rating. So that's what it looks like here. You can see basically all performance converges to average over a period of three, five, and 10 years. Five star becomes three star, one star becomes maybe two star. So everything comes to this average range here. Interesting. So why is it so difficult to pick the correct stock or fund? Because you have to do all these things correctly. You have to pick, first of all, the correct market, the direction, apply the correct strategy, have the correct entry and timing, and then how do you exit that strategy? Most people spend so much time trying to find the right stock and the right strategy, and they get into it, and then all of a sudden, their plans fall apart when things start, you know, what do they say when you get punched in the face, your, your plans go out the window. So you need to manage that. Now, it turns out that monkeys might be the best stock pickers. I recall reading about this way back when in college, kind of that random walk theory, and they kind of repeat these things, throwing darts and whatnot. It says here, simulated results of 100 monkeys throwing darts at the stock pages. Average monkey outperformed the index by an average of 1.7% per year since 1964. So there is your hedge fund trader of the year. That's uh, something to keep in mind. It's not that easy to beat the indexes. And what are the pitfalls of, of trading? Well, emotions. When we trade, we think we're all familiar with having that anxiety, sometimes a little bit of fear, a little bit of greed, some of hope. They can become our own worst enemy. We have bad wiring. We have a built-in bias to essentially sell the lows and buy the highs, according to Mark Lindheim tend to agree with that. We overcomplicate things. It's a cool looking chart. I just found this and thought, you know, kind of makes my point, but I wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> so we want to simplify. That's what we're going to talk about. So just a brief overview. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with all this. So we'll go through this quickly. Stock market indexes versus individual stocks. An index represents the entire stock market tracking those changes over time, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ Composite, the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 was the S&P 90 until 1957. Now it's 500 stocks like Berkshire Hathaway, Chevron, Coca-Cola, et cetera, considered the best representation of the market. There's the history of the S&P 500 back to 1927. You can see the upward trend there, but a lot of volatility along the way. So why are we looking at indexes and not individual stocks? Well, first of all, it's convenient. You can follow one or two indexes, not thousands of stocks and funds and ETFs. And an index is less volatile. Although a day like today is interesting. I said here, might move 3% in a day at most, which is kind of where we are today, I think, actually, in some of the major indexes. Uh, individual stocks can move 10 20% or more um, often. They can be very volatile. Here's TD Ameritrade. Remember this? So, few months back. Um, they announced uh, no commissions, I think, or Schwab was it, and then lost something like 30% in a day compared to the NASDAQ, just kind of yawned. And they may move in different directions, non-correlated, nothing new here, but here's the NASDAQ, the blue line, and here's Tesla just the other day, um, non-correlation. Yeah, there you go. Tesla was up 11% when I captured that screen, and the NASDAQ was down about half a percent. So, with that said, let's look at insurance companies. How do they make money? We all pay premiums, so we understand how that works. They collect our premiums, but they manage calculated risk. So they're essentially selling time, hoping nothing happens, but they do hedge themselves and they are patient and they know that probabilities will favor them. They just look at the math and they stick with it. Statistics, actuarials, that type of thing, expected returns. We can apply some of that wisdom to options trading. So let's look at a casino example or a house example with a roulette. You're all familiar with uh, 38 numbers on a roulette wheel. Let's say you were to bet $100 on that green zero and spin it 38 times. Odds are over a long enough period of time, you would win once and lose 37 times, winning 3,500, but losing 3,700 and all the other losing spins. So your average loss in that case would be $5.26, and that becomes the house's gain, and that's their edge. They do this even though they understand they will pay out winnings at times, even large winnings at times. But in the long run, 
They're willing to do it to take that edge. It's the law of large numbers. We're all familiar with this. The average of results obtained from a large number of trials should be close to the expected value and become closer to the expected value as more trials are performed. So let's look at a baseball analogy. Higher probability is what we call a base hit, not trying to swing for the fences or hit a grand slam. So here's a baseball star from way back when, I remember him as a kid, Rod Carew. Listen to this, he won batting championships hitting no home runs. So that's sort of what we're trying to do and we're gonna show you in this demo. Batting titles, MVPs, lots of base hits, lots of singles, not home runs, hardly any home runs at all, I should say. So how do we do this with options, high probability strategies? Well, we wanna collect premium. We wanna sell specific options. And to do this, you need to be consistent and patient. You need to manage risk. You need to expect to have losers, but you also need to manage that reward, not getting greedy, but you need the proper tools. So remember, not swinging for the fences, many base hits. So these are credit spreads. Now, if you're not familiar with options, don't worry about it. We do offer some video, video tutorials, but nonetheless, stick with this. I think you'll understand how we make it so easy. So these are insured positions. These are covered uh, credit spreads, predetermined risk and reward, non-directional in nature or directional, but we like to focus oftentimes on non-directional strategies. And your maximum reward is the net premium you collect including the fees, of course, and then your maximum risk, and I'll show you on a graph, it's the difference between the short and the long option strike prices minus the premium you received. So remember, an option spread is one net price. It could be two, three, four, five, six legs to an option spread. Combined together, you price it out, and what's the one net price? That's the price we're trading. That's what we talk about when we're, we're saying an option spread. We look at that one net price as an object. So here's an advantage of a credit spread on a stock index. There's what we call the highly technical term of wiggle room, or you could just say margin of error. So, and you know an index is less volatile than an individual stock. Here's the S&P 500, kind of trading away with a slight upwards bias. And even if it moves closer to your upper boundary of a spread or lower boundary of a spread, the value of that spread still may not uh, move against you, and we'll show you why. Let's look at the Greeks when it comes to options trading and probability. You can get really deep into the weeds on the Greeks, but we don't, and we don't need to, and neither do you, in our opinion. Um, just two things, the delta, and all it represents is the change, percentage change in option value compared to the change in the underlying asset. Quite simply, here's an example. Here's the S&P at 31.20. Here's a 3090 put at 15, delta of 0.25. Let's say that contract goes down 10 points to 3110. What's going to happen to the value of this option? It was at 15 points. Well, it now gains 3.75 points or 25% because of the 0.25 delta. Just that simple. Remember, at the money options have deltas of 50%, deep in the money about 100%. Deep out of the money options might have a one or two percent delta. It takes a big, big move in a short period of time in the underlying contract to impact the value of a deep, deep out of the money option. But here's the big secret with deltas. We'll show you how to apply this. It also equals the approximate probability of expiring in the money. So a 0.25 delta means 75% chance of expiring worthless. And that's how we want to look at this. And we'll show you in this demo here. So it's not a static number. It's always moving with price and time. And does not represent the probability of a winning trade. That's important to remember too. Now the other aspect here we're going to look at is theta. So once again, we talked about uh, how a, a spread might move or a market might move against your spread or your position and it may not matter so much, that's because of time decay or theta, sensitivity to time. As you know, options are a wasting asset. Every option will die at some point, have a limited lifespan, and that sensitivity to time is theta, expressed as a negative number, equals one day of time decay. So premium of 10, you have a theta of negative 0.05, 
then that means the next day the premium would be 9.95 and then 9.90 and so on and so forth after that, assuming all other things are equal. And then theta decay means unless that underlying asset moves quickly enough, every out of the money option is zero at expiration. So theta decay is in large part what gives us that uh, margin of error or that wiggle room we talked about when we're selling spreads. Here's what it looks like on a graph. As time approaches zero, the percent of the premium remaining on an option starts to really fall off dramatically. So you wanna take advantage of that. You wanna sell out of the money spread, spreads, credit spreads and watch time pass. And you hope that a whole, you know, nothing really happens too dramatic. Uh, but of course we know it's not that easy. It'd be great, great if we could place a trade and just watch the paint dry, but it's not that easy. We're gonna show you how to manage risk. So let's look at a credit spread example. I'll look at um, a graph here. Bearish to neutral, you collect premium by selling a call, and then you limit risk and buy a higher strike call of the same expiration. So here's an example. Here's the S&P trading away up around 3,300 here in this example. You decide for whatever reason, you think maybe the market's gonna slow down, uh, might even drift a little higher, that's fine, but eventually, soon enough, you think it's gonna sort of fizzle out. So you sell a 3530 call represented by the red horizontal line, and you receive four and a half points for doing that. Then you buy the 3550 call at the same time, and you pay out two and a quarter. So the net you collect is $112.50 in this example, minus your commissions and fees. So that's a credit spread for selling calls. Here's selling puts. Here's the S&P, around 3,300. And for whatever reason, you're thinking, well, I'm gonna sell these out of the money puts here. Uh, don't think the market's gonna fall apart and go down below 3,000 anytime soon. So you sell that 29.90 put for three. You buy the 29.70 put for a dollar. You collect $100 on that spread and there you have it. That's what it looks like. Now remember, these are not naked options. <clears throat> these are covered spreads. You do not want to trade naked options in our opinion. You don't want to end up like this cat. So that means your risk is predetermined. And also, you know, let me run through this quick example of a, of a naked option. S&P is, let's say in this case, at 2,800. You decide to sell a 2,585 put receive premium, but then look what happens. The S&P drops down to 2350 and you're still short that put. You'd be sitting on a loss of almost $12,000 just by selling that one naked put option and sitting on it and, and not managing that risk. But had you done this as a spread by buying the 2565 put, your maximum risk would be no more than 20 points. You wouldn't have collected quite as much up front, but your risk would be uh, more than 10 times less, dramatically less. So don't end up like this naked rat. And remember selling options, we're only doing covered options and that means no margin calls. That's another benefit. Now here's an iron condor, non-directional. It's just a combination of the call and put spread that we saw. So let's take a look here. Here's the S&P trading sideways and you've sold a call spread above the market and a put spread below the market. You've done so simultaneously. You've collected premium on both of those spreads and you are just hoping the market stays generally in this range between the red lines. It's just that simple. So let's look at one of our proprietary strategies, something we call the dragonfly. If you haven't heard it, it's because uh, we came up with that name a while back. <laughs> it's a variation on a condor. Let me show you what it is. You are selling four options below the market, in this case, the puts, and selling four calls above the market here. And at the same time, you buy three out of the money calls above, and then you buy one closer to the money call. So here's what the trade structure looks like. It's a total here of three different strike prices, all placed simultaneously. And you're buying this closer to the money put and call, and that changes the whole dynamic of uh, the strategy compared to a condor because it's so much closer to the money 
uh, it's going to hold its value a lot more or perhaps even gain in value uh, um, a lot more than the options that are further out of the money from it. And I'll show you in an example. You can do another variation, the half dragonfly. You could do just the call side of a dragonfly. That's what it looks like. Or you could do just the put side. There's also something we call a bear hedge. Really a synthetic position. Doesn't Don't want to sound too complicated, but this is a good example of something you could have on today <laughs> where you're selling an out of the money spread and using that money to buy an out of the money put spread. So you could sell an out of the money call spread, collect the premium, and then use that premium to buy an out of the money put spread. You can also do the opposite. Um, we call it a bull hedge. So remember, variety of expirations in these ES futures and there's a lot to choose from so here how do you know which trades to make which to choose who to sell to what to sell where do the premiums come from lots of questions the what when where why then how do you manage the risk and profits kind of leaves us a little bit perplexed like uh, maxwell smart so we've done all this testing over the years we built a fresh approach to trading these complex option spreads it's called theta trader it's collecting premium selling time with pre-built spreads. These are automatically generated for you. We have a proprietary algo that creates what we call theta trades. And then these are available for any market condition. And then we can automate your risk and your profit management. Something we call the risk thermal indicator, color-coded, and it's all automated and automatic. And I'll show you how to do that here. So if you like what you see, we're going to show you how to take action in just a second. In the meantime, let me switch screens here. Okay, you should all be seeing my dashboard here for Theta Trader. And if you're not, someone speak up and let me know. <laughs> okay, so this is the Theta Trader dashboard. And We'll get through this. There's a lot here, but I'll cover the high points. This is just a demo account, so don't uh, don't spend too much attention here on trying to figure out the details there. But um, let's start at the top. Theta trades. You can see here bullish, bearish, and neutral, and these are all pre-populated by the algorithm. You can see all the strategies. Some of them that we just talked about. The condor. You can do just a put or call spread. You can even do long option spreads, butterfly position. We talked about the bull hedge. We talked about the bear hedge. You can see it right there. And then you can see the markets we're trading, the ES, just hover over. You can see the NASDAQ mini and the Russell mini. But for the most part, we've been trading the ES for many, many years, the occasional uh, Russell, Russell or NASDAQ. And you can see at a glance here, your dashboard, these are your open short position spreads. Any uh, open long position spreads here? And I'll explain how that works in just a second, but let's just dig in with a trade. We looked at condors, let's just look at a condor. And this is what it looks like. These are all the trades the algorithm generated anywhere from 18 to 78 days till expiration. And in fact, maybe I should do this. You can see the screen better. So let's just go ahead and you can see the strikes here. You hover over and it gives you the profit potential here at expiration and something called the tar targeted annualized return you can't expect these types of returns uh, these are just here for comparing one trade to another that's the best way to look at it and you notice the higher tar number is always going to be applied to the spread with the least amount of time it just assumes you annualize it that's why but it's there for comparison sake so let's look at this one i like to look at the option spreads that have the most time for the sake of these demos First thing I like to do is look at a chart that gives me perspective. So here, here's the S&P trading and selling an out of the money call spread, selling an out of the money put spread. The red and the blue lines designate the calls. You can see the 30, 50, 20, 35, 20 calls you're selling, buying the 35, 40s, and then the puts. You can break those down individually. But let's look at the condor. Here's a days till expiration, 78. Settled at 2.4 points, your net premium, your maximum put risk, call risk, commission, cash required, and your profit potential. So here's something here. 
it takes $900 to make maybe $100 maximum. So why would you do that? Why would you risk $900 to make only $100? Well, we talked about deltas, remember? Here's the delta on the put you're selling is 9.68. So you're talking about over a 90% probability that this option is going to expire out of the money. And here's the call, 6.52 delta. Once again, 90, what is that? 93.48% probability that this call will expire out of the money. So these are the high probability types of strategies we like to use. And that's why uh, you'd want to be basically make, you know, uh, placing trades like this for the base hits over and over and over. Here's something called the T-Rock total return on cat, targeted return on cash, about 11% and then your targeted annualized return. We talked about that. Now you could change any of these strikes if you wanted, but quite frankly, most people just accept what the algo gives them. They're pre-populated as a sell quantity of one, always defaults to one, but let's say you did, um, I don't know, let's just say seven, make it interesting. You could always change the price if you want. You could add discretion on the order, but let's go ahead and place that trade. <clears throat> and there it is. You see it's filled in demo mode. And it's just that easy. Now here's something else. We have a trade simulator you can back test. Let me show you how that works. I've already loaded some for the sake of uh, brevity here. So here's a trade from September last year. You can use these buttons to play the chart day by day or go all the way to the end or go step by step. But this is pretty cool stuff. So you press play and let me show you what's happening down here. You can see the first day you place the trade and then as the days go by, and you can see here this green, that means good, go do nothing. The RTI, the algo says, just sit with the trade, do nothing. The trade's turning profitable now. Nothing to do except watch time pass. Then look at this, it turns blue. That means time to take profits. You've captured over 70% of the potential profit. In this case, the algo says, get out, take your money and run and put it to work elsewhere. It's just that easy. And you can automate that. You can automate the entry, uh, the exit point on this. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So that's one simulation. Let's look at another condor from a um, couple years back. So once again, it's all green, everything's going fine. But the market's starting to head up closer to that upper boundary a little bit, but it still turns blue. Once again, take your profits and run. But let's assume. You got a little bit ahead of yourself and thought, eh, it's not going to do anything. I'm just going to capture 100% and sit on it. And then look what happens. It turns yellow, means caution, turning yellow because it's getting closer to that upper boundary. Now it goes green again. Oh, and it turns red. That's too much risk. Theta Trader says, get out. And the point here is that you don't want to avoid these signals. You want to take those profit signals and not take a winning trade and turn it into a losing trade. And now let's look at another condor here and then we'll show you a dragonfly. But let's take a look at this one. Give you a little more room to see here. So it's turning yellow and that's because it's getting close to that upper boundary there. A little bit of caution and then it turns red. Okay, so essentially, you place this trade um, just late last year. Now you took a loss on it on this condor, and you can automate that loss and or that that risk management. Now let's look at before we look at the simulator on the dragonfly. Let me show you what a dragonfly looks like on the dashboard. Okay, here's your dragonflies. Let's just look at one here. You kind of know how this works already. You saw this on the condor, but this is what the dragonfly structure looks like. Remember, you're selling four calls and puts, and then you're buying four calls and puts. So you're always covered. For every short option, there's a long option. And you'll notice the targeted return on cap capital is a little bit lower than a typical uh, condor. And that's because of essentially the extra call and put that you bought uh, closer to the money. 
So you pay a little money and have a little bit of uh, extra protection. You can see the cash required is higher, a little over 5,000. And that's because of course you're selling four options, not just one with a condor. See the value here in this case is 8.9, defaults to a quantity of one. So the deltas here for the puts and calls are the same. So you're selling the same puts and the same calls as we did with the condor. Uh, you're just buying different calls. So let's go ahead and puts, I'm sorry. And there, there's the dragonfly placed. So now that you've seen that, and you just saw the simulator here on this condor. And remember, this is a trade from November 20 of last year. And you saw how it uh, turned red. Uh, let's see, back here on November 16. And that means take your loss and move on. So let's look at a dragonfly on November 20. Same day. And let's see what happens if you had placed a dragonfly. You can see here, of course, the market's doing the same thing. <laughs> But look at that. It turns profitable with only 29 days left and says, take your money and run. And that is because this blue line here represents a long call option. And that call option is gaining so much value that it allows you to take profits and move on to another trade. So that's a big difference. Certain, certain situations, you're gonna see the dragonfly turn profitable and a condor actually have a loss. And let's look at one more condor here. So all is well. Getting a little close to that upper boundary and with two days left, it finally turns profitable enough to trigger an exit signal to get out. Now let's look at a dragonfly during that same, this is the same date. Uh, actually Valentine's Day a year ago. And of course, you don't have to play the chart like this. You could go right to the end, but I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. This trade actually turns profitable, has a blue signal. So you could have taken profits here with 34 days remaining compared to the dragonfly or the condor we just looked at. You had to wait for only two days remaining. So there is the big difference. And then you, I did point out earlier, I think the, uh, the bear hedges, um, if you're bearish, yeah, I pointed out all this before, butterfly puts, typical call and put spreads. Now let's look at the settings here. I'll show you how to do that uh, in terms of automation. Activate risk manager, that's all you do, check that box. Activate your profit directive, you check that box. That's all you do, and it's automated. All the ex exiting can be automated. Now here are tutorials. They're all videos here. If you need a little uh, brush up on ThetaTrader, here's some additional education on options uh, strategies. If you're not fully up to speed, these are all videos here. And then we offer something called TradeScope. That's our daily proprietary research as well. It's a brief technical analysis overview and then an outlook here on the mar market. And we also offer our daily trading summary. This is more of a narrative of the day's activity in Asia, in Europe, here in the US, and then any economics data to look at um, reports. Actually, we bought some put spreads the other day. So those are working out. Anyway, so, and then here, you can see something called Trade Builder as well. If you want to just start from scratch, build your own spread, you can pick your market contract, pick your strategy, then follow the prompts. But quite frankly, people follow the algo. That's the whole point of this. Now, here's another thing to open positions. Once you place a trade, how do you follow it? If you are following spreads within a typical brokerage environment, it can be a nightmare. Part of the catalyst for doing Theta Trader was to make this super easy. Look how easy that is. Each one of these lines represents a particular spread trade. You can see the RTI at a glance, uh, the different colors, what they represent. Um, those are all actually up here in the settings as well. But don't worry about that right now. 
but you can see here all the different uh, open positions. You can look at your closed positions. At a glance, you can filter in any way you want. So you can see here how easy it is to follow along, place a trade, track the trade. You can automate your exit, and there you have it. So that is a brief overview of the Theta Trader platform and the dashboard. So let's go ahead and go back, and I'll show you probably the best feature of all. Okay, we should be back to the presentation. And if I'm not, let me know. Someone yell at me, please. You should be seeing Lucy and Ethel stuffing their mouth with chocolates there, getting a little overwhelmed as they sped up the conveyor belt. So remember, the whole point of this is we don't want you sitting behind screens like this all day, like this guy. You've got your own life to live. You'd rather be doing things, maybe go on vacation with your family, whatnot. So that was the whole point of this. And to make it even easier, we have what we think is the best feature. What we can literally, literally do in one minute, trade alerts. And these are one-touch trade alerts. What I mean by that is these are live. They're integrated with your trading account with us. You receive an alert on your phone. If you accept the alert, the alert, touch green. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to log into another platform somewhere and try to transpose what's on an alert or a message or text or email or whatever. That's, uh, that's old technology. This is all integrated. We make it super easy. And then, of course, as you saw, if any of those trades are filled, just like normal, you could have the RTI automatically manage those positions for you. So here... Is a brief video. Here's what it looks like. You get a link. You touch that link. Brief description of the trade. Here's a condor. Here's a graph. See the net premium. Required cash. And these are all uh, pre-sized. I don't know if you can see that. It's the quantity is pre-sized for your account. Obviously, software knows what positions you have, what your balance is, and these are pre-sized, and you're uh, going to receive the quantity already filled in for you, days till expiration, targeted annualized return on your capital, current quote, and if you like it, you just touch green. If you don't like it, you just reject. And that's it. So if you wanna look at it again, real quickly. And there's the pricing, two and 2.65 points. And that is it. So how cool is that? So hopefully you think that's a new and valuable tool, Theta Trader and the alerts. Maybe something you didn't even know existed, something you've been looking for. So how to get involved? We have the Elite membership. It includes the Theta Trader software, everything you saw, the proprietary algo, building those spreads for you, simple, effective trade selection, simple trade tracking, as you saw, how easy that is. Here's what it looks like on a typical uh, brokerage statement, trading futures option spreads. Good luck figuring that out. I've been doing this since 1991, and it still looks like that. Um, here's the RTI, automatically exit your trades, what we call autopilot, non-emotional trading. And here's how you do the automated risk manager. You can see there in the demo, I showed you how to do that. And the profit directive is that easy. Trade simulator, you saw us run through several trades. You can go back in time, have a lot of fun with that, trading any strategy, a lot of fun to do. Trade Builder, so you have the Theta Trades, the RTI, the Simulator, and the Trade Builder. Yearly value of at least $35.88 for that software. A lot of time, a lot of development, a lot of money went into this, a lot of experience. You saw the Trade Alerts, remember these are integrated, meaning they're live, they're active, they're interactive. You just touch Accept or Reject. And that's all you need to do. Yearly value on that trade alert service, 
at least $4,400. I know I've talked to people that are spending a fortune on quarterly alerts, on yearly alerts, on week, whatever it is, they're spending a lot of money. And here's how you set it up here too, just where you do the risk manager, same thing, you just check trade alerts and that's how you receive it. Now you have a private coach available with the elite membership as well. So if you wanna do something like this with DataTrader, aren't 100% certain, totally confident, you can work with your private coach here. You get one hour sessions, uh, index selection on the theta trades themselves, a simulator, how to diversify and you know, ladder your, your trades, uh, uh, analysis, set up, set up strategies, you name it. All this on the stock index futures option space and the theta trader software. It's all available to you, a value of at least $7,500. And I know, I know that's actually undervalued because I see people selling education for $25,000. And that's all good and well, but with DataTrader, we make it so easy. Uh, you don't need to spend that time and money, in our opinion, um, to do what we're doing. So with DataTrader, remember, you get the software, the trade alerts, the private coaching, a value of over $15,000. So hopefully you can see that DataTrader could save you a lot of time and money. You could even cancel other subscriptions could lower your stress, time, aggravation. It could be worth it, right? This guy says, you betcha. I like that picture. So a little bit corny, but you know they say, but wait, there's more. Okay. Remember, we saw the Theta Trader um, trade scope and daily commentary. That's our proprietary research. Yearly value of over $2,900 for that. And then we have the online tutorials built into Theta Trader. So video tutorials on the platform and on option strategies. That's thrown in as just a bonus, of course yearly value of over $18,000 for all that good stuff. And even at half price, it would be a great deal for the elite membership, absolutely it would. But uh, we aren't going to even offer that. We can do a lot better for the Synergy Trading Group. One-time payment, 997. That's one time, it's not a quarterly, monthly, yearly thing. One time, you can see the link there and the phone number. 997, but we'll do even better than that. 20% discount if you want to take action before Sunday night, before that offer expires. 797, we do offer a 30 day guarantee. So, quite frankly, if it's not something that you think is a fit for you, we aren't going to try to convince you otherwise. I mean, it's one of those things where you're either going to love it or you're not. So, if it's 29 days later, you think it's not for me, that's fine. No harm done, no foul, and uh, that's okay. So there is what it looks like. That's the order form, good example there. One time charge, 797 for your elite membership. You get everything we just talked about. And that's really a one-on-one -on -one style of service. This is not just a um, chat bot or a chat room or an online only kind of thing. This is a very unique, uh, value added proposition with that one on one level of service. Now, if you're talking about a free elite membership, absolutely trade with us a uh, $50,000 account balance. We can refund that membership fee, not a problem. Trading account types yes, you can trade with an IRA account, uh, corporate, individual, LLC, joint, trust, you name it, all the above. So, here's a little section we like to call it Bet You Didn't Know It. ES options, we talked about the E-mini S&P 500 options, so ES. They have very, very tight spreads. So the order execution quality, here's a study from the CME group, you can see the link. Here's a cost comparison, so let's look at the quality and the cost. It says here, the analysis shows on average, they offer superior execution and in, uh, a cost savings of four to $15 per contract compared to uh, securities options on the indexes. So very interesting. So that's what we're talking about there. You want a real tight spread. You don't want a wide spread when you're trading, and transacting and adding to your slippage and your cost. Now let's look at this. You've all heard of Robinhood and you've heard the, a few months ago, all the big brokerage firms went to free stock trading. Well, it's not free. And I'll show you why. And maybe some of you know this already but there's something called payment for order flow. 
So stock brokerages are paid by third-party market-making firms to route their orders to them for execution. So what am I talking about? Here's an article from, uh, I think it's Seeking Alpha, or <clears throat> I'll put it up in a second. It says, Robinhood making millions <clears throat> selling out their millennial customers to high-frequency traders. They're well on their way to making hundreds of millions of dollars in cash income by selling their customer orders to the HFT meat grinder. High-frequency traders are not charities. The only reason high-frequency traders would pay Robinhood tens to hundreds of millions of dollars is that they can exploit the retail customers. So what they're talking about are market-making groups like Citadel. You submit an order and you think uh, the brokerage firm you just submitted the order to is filling the order. They're not. They're, they're, they're putting that order in a nanosecond, of course. They're setting it to these market, third-party market-making firms and they fill the orders. So it's a, a very, very opaque type of environment. So really, here's a quote. No such thing as a free lunch. This is kind of harsh, but I, I kind of, I have put it in here anyway. Schwab and others confirm status as casinos, purveyors of financial opioids. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Retail stock brokerages are not charities. They will make, absolutely make up lost commission revenue in other ways, usually obfuscated way down in the guts of their workflow processes where a few people notice. That's an article from the Tab Forum by Paul Rode. So the point is not to say you can't trade stocks or stock options. It's just that it's not free. I think we all know that. Now with e-mini options, there are no hidden costs. These are not securities options. These trade at the CME group on the Globex exchange, meaning it's all electronic and it's the same market for everybody, large or small traders. There's no payment for order flow, equal treatment. So tax efficiency, something else you probably didn't know. Uh, when you're trading futures options and futures, everything is taxed with the favorable 60-40 tax treatment. So that's a com comparison to trading, say, stock options uh, for less than a year. You get in and out of a stock option or a stock uh, here's here's an example. If you're trading individual stock options, you have a hundred thousand dollar account, twenty percent return. And you're in the highest bracket. That's a seventy four hundred dollar tax, twelve point six percent. Same scenario trading ES options. Your tax is only fifty three hundred and sixty dollars. Your rate of return goes up to fourteen point six four percent. Tax savings of over two thousand dollars simply because you're trading. A different instrument, the instrument uh, that clear, we clearly prefer, the ES options or any futures or futures options. So remember, there's also no more itemizing when you're trading with us. You get one number, you get your, your 1099 has your one PL profit or loss for the year, and then you plug that into your taxes, and that's it. You don't have to do itemize, itemizing and off sales and all that other nonsense. Here's some FAQs. Can I trade stock options with TheraTrader? No, we specialize in options on futures and especially e-mini stock index futures markets. You saw some of the reasons why, um, high growth, the volume, liquidity in the e-mini futures options markets, uh, tremendous growth. It's the place to be in our opinion. Key benefits, you get those tight spreads, you can track just one or two markets, not waste your time trying to filter through thousands. And there's a clear cost structure. You know exactly what your cost is. It's not opaque. There's no uh, buried uh, cost down along the way in the um, you know, third-party market-making firms and that stuff. So can I use Theta Trader and the alerts with my current brokerage? Well, we are the brokerage firm that developed the software and those things, Theta Trader and the alerts, are our proprietary service and integrated with what we do. And what is Theta Trader's performance? Well, it's a it's just a software trading platform for self-directed clients. So self-directed clients make their own trading decisions. Everyone has different results. And actually a good thing I put this here as a reminder. All the performance calculations that we saw in the demo for Theta Trader, all the, you know, your targeted percent of this or your return on that or whatever, those are all net of trading cost. 
all the results in Theta Trader are net of trading cost. So that begs the question, what are the costs? Our commissions are competitive. Our E-mini rate is five and a quarter. That's round turn. That's all in. Let me explain that. So if you see, I just went to a big major brokerage firm, stock firm, and they said they trade futures options and their rate's only two and a quarter. But if you look closely, it's per side. Then they have an asterisk and you read below and they add clearing and exchange fees on top of that. And when you add it all up, it's actually higher than what we charge. So our rates are very competitive, especially for the kind of service we offer uh, with that personal touch and that one-on-one -on -one style of service. So how much money should I start trading with? Well, you saw with the ES Condor, the way we do it with the 20 point spread between the long and the short option, it's about a, it's $1,000 for each Condor. And it's about $5,000 for a Dragonfly. So if you wanna have you know, maybe 10 different treads, uh, spread trades going at once or more diversified, laddered among different strikes and expirations and markets, you'd, uh, you would need 25 to 50,000 um, is what we suggest. So here we are getting close to the end. So we talked about taking action. If you liked what you saw, now is your opportunity to do so and you can get that 20% discount before Sunday cf.altavest.com forward slash tt elite there's our phone number as well but uh, quite frankly most people just use that form and get themselves started makes it easy so act now to become a client there's some of us having dinner with some clients and here's a summary remember high probability strategies use time to code to your advantage use the algorithm they pre it pre-builds the trades for you and then you can automate your risk and your profits with those one-touch trade alerts, you can do in just minutes a day. All market conditions, bull, bear, and flat markets. You saw like a day like today, wouldn't it be neat to have some uh, some long put strategies in place or some short call strategies? You know, absolutely, you can do all the above. Tax efficiency, we talked about that. Diversification, remember, what you're doing here is completely unrelated to uh, really any stock market performance or any benchmark or any index. It's an absolute return type of approach. So you can have strategies in place that are, you know, zigging when the market zigging and, and you can have strategies in place that are non-directional in nature. Um, so you understand that. And then you can just follow one or two indexes. You don't have to pay attention and try to listen to what's happening with every other stock and all the fundamentals. And I mean, that can be overwhelming. You do have that personal coaching available with your elite membership as well. So here you go. That is your lifetime membership for the elite Theta Trader service, 797. That's with the discount expires Sunday evening. And there is the link right there, cf.altavest.com forward slash TT Elite. And there's our phone number as well. All right, I think. That is the end of the presentation. And I'm just looking at, see if there's any other questions I didn't get, a, get to yet. Yeah, people asked about how much to start trading. How do, you, how do you decide between a condor and a dragonfly? Well, you know, I think one thing is uh, dragonfly, you know, you're looking at about a $5,000 uh, commitment per trade and the condors, uh, 1000 so you can get more granular with a condor maybe fill in some spaces but we like the dragonfly the the targeted returns aren't necessarily as high but in return for that you have some different uh, you know risk uh, characteristics as well it has more staying power in certain market conditions but you know other conditions too uh, work well dragon uh, the condor works well it really is um, one of those things you can get a feel for maybe use a simulator uh, talk to your advisor about, but neither one is always better or always, you know, preferred than the other. Uh, they both have a place, so we like to use them both, but we do sort of like to lead with the dragonfly. So let's put it that way. I think we, we would probably focus, if you're looking at a non-directional strategy, we like to focus on the dragonfly uh, just for that one reason where there are certain circumstances where if the market's approaching your upper or lower boundary, that dragonfly uh, will tend to provide more benefit than a condor. And then people asked about account size here. 
uh, like you see, I think I answered that. Fifty thousand uh, dollars will refund the membership fee, and um, but you do do you need some capital to do this, uh, to do it the right way. You don't want to just have enough to do one spread, and that's really not um, advisable in our opinion. All right, I think that. Is, uh, let's see here. I'm looking at any more questions. No, I think that's good. So that will wrap it up for me. Thank you very much for your time and for attending. Welcome your phone calls or comments or emails or questions, or you can just go right to the form and uh, get yourself signed up if you feel this is something uh, that you'd like to get involved with. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Eric, for your presentation and accepting our invitation. It was a really exceptional uh, presentation, so I hope you guys take advantage of uh, the